Hello everybody and welcome to Lobrix. It looks like LEGO and Dungeons of Dragons have decided to do a collaboration. So they went ahead and released this minifigure series a little while back, uh, which goes over, I guess, characters from Dungeons and Dragons. I'm not much of a Dungeons and Dragons enthusiast myself, so I'm not gonna know uh, much about any of these characters, but supposedly within the game, which is a little bit of a strange game, it's not necessarily like a, like Monopoly where all the pieces are included, it's like you gotta buy everything separately. But supposedly, we can look inside these manuals here. We have the player's manual, the dungeon master guide, and the monster manual over there. And it's going to reveal to us what these characters and or monsters, creatures, or ghouls might be. Because uh, I'm not going to have any clue. But anyway, let's open these up individually and see which characters we have in this set. Okay, so LEGO has these new boxes uh, where you can't actually feel the minifigure inside, which is a bummer because the packages uh, that they used to have, you'd be able to figure out what figure it was just by kind of figuring out which piece are inside. So how you have to do it now is by scanning this QR code with an app that you can download on the iTunes store or the Google Play store. So it's kind of the same thing, but a little bit more technologically advanced. This reminds me of Back in the day, you know, I know none of you kids are gonna remember this, but they used to have the little dots on the back of them and you'd have to like use some sort of code to decipher it. Never worked, but anyway, let's open our first figure and figure out who we got. All right, I never figured out a really great way of opening these. Usually I just open them up at the store to figure out which figure it was, but they decided to make that change. Um, we have to do some building here. Let's take a look. All right, this is our first figure here. I have no idea what it is. Looks like some sort of goddess lady. But not to fear, we can consult uh, our different manuals here to try to figure this out. I think I'm gonna go with the monster manual, uh, just cause she looks a little bit like the fella on the cover. So let's take a look and see if we can figure out who this lady is. Let me tell you, there are all sorts of creatures in here but I cannot find a single one that looks like this lady. Uh, so we're just gonna go back to the traditional style where I just make them up names for myself. So you know what? That's what we're gonna do because I don't have a degree in Dungeons and Dragons. So we're gonna call her Sun Goddess. That's her name, that's what we're sticking with. But anyway, let's move on to the next figure. Let's take a look to see what we got. All right, so next up, it looks like we got this elf dude slash lady here. So it is interesting. It looks like we do get two different heads with this figure. We get a female head and then a male head. Uh, and that continues with quite a lot of figures in the set. So it looks like we get a female head and a male head uh, for quite a lot of figures. So um, we'll look forward to that. Um, but it also does make it a little strange to display. Uh, just because there'll be an extra little head sticking off there. But you know what, Lego, that's your fault, not mine. All right, here's our next figure. Let's take a look at what we get. Oh. Spill it out. All right, looks like next up we got Dark Celsius of the Celsius District. Um, so pretty cool. He's got a flaming skull, flaming fist. He's bald. Uh, you know, he looks like Voldemar or uh, the guy from Harry Potter. Pretty cool looking figure overall. You know, I'd be pretty scared of him if I ran into him in the streets at night. That'd be kind of spooky. I don't know, man. It's kind of scary. Anyway, let's move into the next figure. I'm really hoping for the octopus man. That's who I'm really looking out for. Also Hermione, also from Harry Potter. So let's take a look at who we got next. Looks like up next we got Captain Birdman with his trusted steed, the Little Pupper. Uh, pretty cool figure, uh, a little strange. Got some strange looking legs with the wings and of course the bird head. Um, you know, Dungeons and Dragons is starting to seem like a little bit of a strange game. You know, we have the goddess of whoever, um, this fiery fella down there. So I guess it's no wonder that parents from the 80s thought that this game involved devil worship, you know? But I guess that's just, you know, part of the time. Misinformed baby boomers will believe anything. But anyway, let's move into the next figure. Let's see who we get here. Again, we're hoping for that octopus, man. Let's take a look. 
All right, so it looks like our next figure is a singing buffoon. Um, it's another one of those gender swaps. So we got a male head and a female head. So I guess that's good if you're trying to play like a Lego version of your Dungeons and Dragons campaign, you can make your character because you have both options of the male and the female head. I guess that's not the case within the bird people land. So uh, we're gonna have to see some more inclusion there next time Lego. Uh, if there's any bird people playing, they're gonna be very offended. Anyway, let's move into the next figure. All right, let's open it up, open it up. Let's see, oh my goodness. All right, so it looks like we've got some sort of dragon knight. I guess this brings a whole new meaning to the knight slaying the dragon. You know, is that gonna be like uh, you know, manslaughter for this guy? I, I don't know. But he has this very interesting looking staff with this dangly bit down at the bottom and a pretty cool shield. So, you know, overall a pretty sweet figure. Anyway, let's see what our next minifigure package has in store for us. Let's take a look. All right, so it looks like we've got some sort of uh, flower man. And it also comes with a female reversible head as well. Uh, maybe like a nature... Uh, character here they've got a bird and what appears to be a nature staff so pretty cool but again not that octopus fella that i've been waiting for that guy right there looks pretty sweet so let's hope we get him next but let's take a look and see what we have all right so it looks like we've got some sort of viking character here pretty cool pretty cool it has like the medium legs that are still kind of bendy uh, and also does include a reversible head uh, one thing that i did want to note uh, these minifigure packets now cost $5, which does mean that you are placing the price at this, you know, pretty high. So that means it's a pretty expensive toy, at least in my eyes. So I mean, for $5 for a minifigure like that, I feel like you're getting what you pay for. Uh, but for a minifigure like this, um, I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of questioning the value. It's just, it seems a little simple to me, but you know, it's very give and take with this sort of stuff. And anytime you're buying kind of useless merchandise anyway, it's like, well, the only value is to you. So you bought it in the first place. So it's kind of your own fault. But anyway, let's move on to the next figure. Okay. Let's hope for the octopus man. All right, looks like we have Evil Hermione. She has a book of devilish spells and a pot of boiling evil. So not great at all, but a pretty cool figure nonetheless. Anyway, guys, we only have three figures left. As you know, Lego did shorten the list um, from 16 to 12 a couple years back with the minifigure selection. So not as many as we used to get. Um, but, you know, it does make each figure, I guess, a little bit more special. But anyway, let's move into our next figure. Fingers crossed we can get the octopus, man. I've been rooting for it all episode. Oh my gosh. It's an octopus head. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. And his pet brain. That is such an interesting piece. It's like a little dog piece. Uh, kind of like, you know, your standard Lego dog, just more brainified. But anyway... We only have two figures remaining, so let's see what they are as they're not gonna top Evil Squidward, but we might as well crack into them. Let's take a look. All right, so it looks like our next figure is Rat King, King of Rats. He has a chalice and a sword, and then of course a little black rat friend that he rules over, one of his subjects, if you will. All right, that just leaves us with one figure left and we can take a look at what we're gonna get and then we'll see the full set in its entirety. So let's rip into the last figure. All right, looks like for the last figure, we have Lucitor Jr., the devil's rebellious teenage son. This one does come with a uh, female head swap, so you can make it a lady as well. But that is gonna be our last figure for the Lego Dungeons & Dragon minifigure set. So let's take a look at the complete set in its entirety. All right, so here's our complete collection of heroes, villains, ghouls, goblins, and devil worshipers right here in front of us. I think it's a pretty cool set. There is a lot of unique figures. You do have this eagle boy um, and the dragon prince there. Um, there are some that I think should include a little bit more uh, with the piece count. Uh, stuff like this, this character here, um, and even the squid guy, uh, maybe just put something in his hand that may be a little cooler. I don't know, maybe like a, a squid 
item of some sort. But it, overall, it is a pretty cool set, and I do think it is worth getting um, if you are a fan of Dungeons & Dragons, or maybe these are one of your characters that you play within a story. Maybe you are an elf guy with an eyeball staff, and you want to use him on the playmat instead of maybe a figurine that you have. You now have the option to do that with this set. But anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this episode. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you like Dungeons & Dragons, don't forget to like the video. And I will see you in the next minifigure unboxing. <laughs>